Hello, everyone. So uh, someone wanted me to talk about uh, uh, Pleva and PLC. Uh, so this video was made specially for you so that you get to understand the difference between pityasis lichenoids H virus form is acuta, that what you call Pleva, or PLC, which you call pityasis lichenoids uh, chronica. So th this entity covers two uh, disease processes that are on the same spectrum. And uh, it is very keen for, uh, for you to understand the difference between the two and how, how do you reach a, a diagnosis of uh, any of these conditions. I'm Dr. Abraham, and I encourage you to subscribe to this channel so that you get more of these medical-related uh, conditions uh, covering dermatology in people with uh, black skin or in, uh, in, 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 in our type of uh, skin uh, texture. So today we shall look at this and then we see the difference. Uh, we shall start with the pityasis lichenoids at various formis acuta, what we call pleva. And uh, it's also called the mucha uh, Habermann's disease. Uh, and sometimes the PLC is also called the gutted uh, parasoriasis. Uh, in some literature. So these, these, these synonyms are uh, very key for you to remember because someone can just say maybe this patient has much Habermann's disease and then you get lost it. It's actually, it is Pleva. And uh, Pleva is very, very interesting uh, because uh, the name itself actually gives the entire description of the condition. So that's why it will be very easy for you to understand. So starting with the history, it was first described by Mucha and Habermann. Those were two scientists. That's why the name uh, was given of the disease was given to them, Mucha Habermann's disease. And this description was given in the years 1894 to around 1925. And PLC was also described by uh, Julius Buck, and uh, that was around the same period of time. Uh, but then Brock came around uh, in the 1902 to put it in the category uh, in that. Um, classification of uh, papillosquamous disorder. Because remember, as I told you in the previous uh, video, that it is Brock that came in to try and classify these particular entities. You where you have psoriasis, where you have lichen planus, then you have other psoriasis form dermatoses like um, Apitosis rosea, where you have uh, things like small plaque parasoriasis, large plaque parasoriasis, and the rest. Then you have also uh, pleva and then PLC. So it is Brock that came in to try and uh, uh, and give this uh, uh, categorization. So uh, uh, PLC commonly affects uh, 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 more males than females. It occurs in children. And uh, what you have to remember, it is one of the conditions that persists in children. So if you have uh, a child present to meet a rash on the body, which has stayed there for over six weeks, each uh, eruption having different uh, types of rashes or different types of skin lesions, then you may need to start thinking about pleva. So when we go to the uh, etiopathogenesis or how it comes about, the exact trigger in pleva and PLC is actually not known. However, different theories have been put forward to try and explain the underlying patho uh, mechanisms, and this usually include the following. We have the first one being uh, abnormal reaction to foreign antigens, which can either be drugs or which can be infections like scabies, and then the child ends up with this particular manifestation. Then it has also been linked to infection with uh, HIV and the powerful virus B19, uh, as well as other hormonal contributions like estrogen and progesterone. And then it has also been linked to other drugs, especially the new biologics, the TNF alpha inhibitors like infliximab and adalimumab, and other drugs like the statins and radio contrast dye. This one they used to give um, uh, the dye they used when you're going to take a contrast CT scans. So it has also been associated with development of uh, preva. And some theories actually think that Preva comes as uh, a host versus uh, a grafty disease, uh, where there's a thinking that maybe there's maternal uh, keratinocytes in the child's skin that trigger an immune response. So whatever the trigger is, which we don't know, the end result is we have a chronotisal expansion, especially the CD8, uh, that is in Preva, and then the CD4, uh, predominating uh, PLC. So in the etiopathogenesis, you have to remember that we don't know the exact 
trigger, but we just have theories that this con these two conditions come because of abnormal reaction either to foreign antigen infections, infections like uh, HIV, scabies, parvovirus, uh, some drugs like um, at, uh, TNF alpha inhibitors and the rest. So at least you have to remember that. And um, in 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 the in the in the clinical picture, what do we actually see? So someone, uh, the child, will present with these recurrent crops of spon uh, with spontaneous uh, regression, and sometimes they can range from papules to papulic papules, uh, crust excoriations, and uh, the the matas papules, eroded papules. So the child will have these different crops of erosions that uh, have different uh, shapes, different levels of development. You'll have scars at one end then you have fresh papules at the other end then in between you have a wide spectrum of various uh, skin presentations and then uh, for preva you will see lesions that will include crusts ulcers vesicles papules uh, and then they when they heal they'll form value uh, value uh, form scars like the ones we see in chicken pox so the child will have symptoms that means sometimes loves after six weeks, but in some cases it can even persist for years. We've seen a child who has had preva for over two years and uh, very resistant to treatment. And um, you have to distinguish it from chicken pox because that is its other and the other conditions that can, that can look like it. Whereas when you go to PLC, that, that is the pityriasis lichenoides chronica. So in this case, the child will have a little bit of a few papules, then a, which may be erythematous. Then you have scales, and this one usually has an indolent uh, cause, and it will leave for you hyperpigmentation as it, as it, is, as it resolves. So you have to tell the difference between uh, um, uh, pleva and then also uh, uh, chicken pox. Because now the, the common thing that we usually confuse it with is chicken pox. But remember, chicken pox is a viral infection which has a very acute onset, meaning that in its uh, in its presentation, someone will have maybe a rash covering almost the entire body in a very short period of time, associated with maybe itching and a problem of maybe fever or mucoclinous involvement with or, or maybe oral erosions and the rest. And you know when you see varicella. Uh, when you treat in about two weeks to three weeks, the child is now okay and they just have scars and post inflammatory, maybe hyperpigmentation or hyperpigmentation with those depressed scars. But now in Pleva, the difference will be is that this child will have this chronic relapsing eruptions which have various, uh, uh, which will look like a varicella. But in this case, they will be there for a very long period of time. So as you can see in this picture here, you see this child has now, for example, this one is an eroded erythematous papule. This one has a crust on top. And then we have this background of uh, hyperpigmentation, hyperpigmentation, and um, you have lesions at different stages of development. Sometimes you have macules, sometimes you have uh, uh, you have papules, you have, so the diff there are different crops and you see it as says for a very long period of time. That's why it is now giving uh, this background of this pigmentation. So when you do dermoscopy, you'll see like a picture like this. So in this case, you'll see this surrounding erythema on each uh, on each papule the, and then this center that is a, a little bit darkish and uh, uh, and uh, how can I say and and atrophic then you'll have this color rate of scale uh, which is double edged and and then attached on the periphery and then detached at the center so this is how the dermoscopy will look like in case you in case you are uh, you've done a dermoscopy on pleva. Then, uh, if you are to go to the pathology, so these two give interface dermatitis uh, with necrotic keratinocytes. However, you have to tell a difference between this the interface that we get here versus the interface that we get in a, in a, in a lichen planus. So in lichen planus, it is very hard for you to see parakeratosis and eosinophils. However, in pleva, sometimes you can see a few scattered eosinophils and uh, parakeratosis can also be present, but still you get the necrotic keratinocytes as we see in, a, in the other side of lichen planus. 
So this is how the picture will look like. So in this case, uh, we are seeing historical picture uh, whereby in this first part A, we are seeing the parakeratosis. You see, you see this in the stratum conium. And you said when you see parakeratosis, you can't make a diagnosis of lichen planus, right? Hope you remember that one. So in this case, we are seeing parakeratosis, we are seeing this lymphocytic infiltrate, and then we are seeing uh, uh, an interface uh, kind of picture. You see the, the basement membrane zone is interfered with. So usually if it is normal, we have a good arrangement of the basal keratinocytes, but in this case, we are having uh, infiltration of the lymphocytes along the basement membrane causing destruction. And then you can see uh, dying keratinocytes. Let me look for a, a good example of a, a dying keratinocyte or necrotic keratinocyte. So in this case, like this particular one, which the one I've pointed out, we see it having reddish uh, cytoplasm. So that is a necrotic uh, uh, keratinocyte. And even in this picture, we see the same picture here. And uh, in this case, we are seeing an interface dermatitis, an interface form of dermatitis. And that's the picture we see in PLC and Pleva. So... In the clinical picture, this is how they look like. You've seen the other picture. So now this one is a close-up to show you how the lesions will vary in type of morphology. So in this case, you are seeing this is a, a, a red uh, a macule. We are seeing this is an eroded papule. This is now a crusted papule. Uh, this is uh, this is now a, a, a nizematous papule. So you see lesions which have a very different picture of presentation. So this is a PLC. In this case, we see more of uh, patches which can either be hyperpigmented or hyperpigmented with, it, with still a few active uh, lesions. So when you are treating, how do we uh, how do you treat these two conditions? That is PREVA and PLC. So the treatment, uh, we usually follow a guideline depending on the surface area that is covered and then depending on the availability of the medicine. So there are different drugs that have been tried out in the management of these two conditions. To start with, we have the topical corticosteroids. Uh, usually these ones uh, can be given, but for a limited period of time because you know the associated side effects, but you can give other things like colta, we can give oral erythromycin, uh, oral tetracycline, even oral erythromycin has been tried. And then also exposure to sunlight. We told the child to be most of the times exposed to the, uh, to the sun uh, without putting on anything. And we know that uh, the natural ultraviolet light can also give some treatment. Uh, but in case you, uh, you have phototherapy, narrowband UVB uh, or even broadband UVB are uh, also uh, good uh, treatment options, including POVA if you have uh, soralin. Then other drugs like methotrexate, cyclosporine, which are immune moderators, immune moderators can also be used when you are treating these uh, cases in case they are calcitrant. Because of the itch, you can usually add on some antihistamines. And in case of uh, superimposed infections, you can give uh, systemic antibiotics and then also systemic corticosteroids in case the things are very, very severe. So uh, how would you, uh, uh, what would be the common uh, differentials that you may think about for each of these conditions? So for PLEVA, you can think about the lymphomatoid pastulosis. You can think about uh, cutaneous small vessel vasculitis. You can think about varicera. And you can also think about other enteroviral ecthanthems, anthropoid bat reactions. That's the papular at carrier. You can also think about ethermal mortformi, lyconoid drug eruption, as well as folliculitis and dermatitis, apatiformis. Though dermatitis at apatiformis will be giving you more deep seated papules, which are usually very pruritic, usually commonly located on the elbows, on the knees, and then also usually on the back and the trunk. Then for PLC, you can think about small plaque parasoriasis, the gutted parasoriasis like in planus, because even the, on the histology, it also gives interface dermatitis. Then you can have other things like pityosis rosea, secondary syphilis, uh, papular dermatitis, and then also like you know, drug eruptions can also be on your list of differentials. 
So those are the two major conditions that we shall cover today. I'll see you in the next video. But a point to remember is that when you look at PLC, look at the name itself, pituasis. But that means it is it has a scale, so it is in the papillary squamous uh, disorders. Lichenoid, so it, the, the papules that it, it gives are flat-topped. That's why the word lichenoid comes from. Uh, and, and then uh, eight varioliformis, meaning it looks like varicella. Acuter, it means that it is acute, acute onset. So it will be uh, less than uh, about six weeks, which is an acute uh, cause of uh, onset. Then if it, if it becomes chronic, then it becomes PLC. It is like you know, uh, chronic. So that's how you tell the difference between pleva and varicera. Thank you very much. We shall stop here for today.